G'day. 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 G'day, g'day. My name is B.O.B. and welcome to another episode of Brother Reflections. Here I am quarantined in my house on the East Coast just outside of Philadelphia. I'm excited to spend Saturday evening with all of you once again as we dive deep into the mythology of the band Brother. With me, as always, is my brother in cohorts in arms, Mr. Angus Richardson. Hello, Bob. And here I am in quarantine in my mountain garden. <laughs> you know, that's and a great name for a band, dude. Yo, Mountain Garden? I'm going to write that down. It's a good yeah. <laughs> idea for a song or something. Mountain Garden sounds strong. So tell me, since the last time we had a, a reflective podcast video together, how, how has things changed for you over there? Uh, well, we've had a lot of rain the last few days, and this is the first day of sunshine in a while. And uh, which is interesting because they declared a drought uh, a couple of weeks ago. So we can't do any more burn offs, but um, it's really lovely to get the rain, but also lovely to have a, a, a break in the rain for our, our chat because mm -hmm. uh, there's more coming tomorrow and we, we need as much as we can get because uh, bushfire season's coming right up. Apart from that, just been doing even more uh, school time with the kids, which is, I think, more challenging for me than. It <laughs> <laughs> oh no it happens ladies and gentlemen hey we didn't say that we had a movie studio for this okay we're using primitive parts to bring you brother reflections <laughs> indeed uh so let me ask you a question real quick. You, just, you were just saying that you know i i know you have two two children do you do you find it difficult to teach at home uh the, the hardest thing is getting around the technology especially up here in the mountains with the internet, not the best. I've had some challenges with the, uh, the live broadcast of, of trying to do performances as well, but getting around that and, uh, you know, I think it won't be long before I'm, you know, firing on all cylinders with that. With the school stuff, I mean, I've, it's been so long since I did all, that, all of that and, uh, and a lot of it's changed how they work things out, like in math. So I'm having to catch up. Um, so it's a bit, it's a bit challenging, but it just takes up a lot of time, and that's okay. That's how it has to be. And I was hoping to get to more archive uh, material. I hunted a bit out, and I was hoping to line up some, some more of the ex brothers. But that'll come. These are the. I feel like these are our pilot episodes where we're just setting the groundwork for what we're going to do. Well, you know, I remember like when I was touring with you guys, you, you had a catchphrase that I still use now as a 40-year-old male. We're going to have to suss it out, mate. And I, We're going to have to suss it out. I never heard, like, I never heard somebody say suss it out, you know? But then, like, as I returned to my, you know, town of Plymouth meeting, Country Hawk and, you know, slash Philadelphia, I started saying that quite a bit. People were like, well, when are we going to get it done, Bob? And I'm going to be like, look, we're going to have to suss it out, mate. <laughs> It's right. like, that makes me think when we're on the road, it's like with any group of people, you, you, you develop your own little codes and language and, and sayings. And for the most part, they're really juvenile and uh, very childish. But, and you can say them over and over, but they, they just keep you laughing. You yeah, know, those long stretches on the road. There's something really special about, you know, um, that connection between a band, you know what I mean? That interpersonal relationship that not many people get a chance to see. But now with Brother Reflections, we're going to bring all that to the fans, okay? So I think that we should just dive right in because everybody here that's gathered, by the way, I mean, you could chat with us below. My name is Bob Cahill, Angus Richardson in the comments, and I believe we'll figure a way to get Brother. Like Angus is in the band Brother, right? But Facebook kind of makes it difficult. If you guys have questions, chime in below. Um, last week, you guys had a great time chatting with us. So, I mean, as we dive back into the mythology of the band, I mean, one of the things we talked about in episode one was the do-it-yourself method of, like, you know, creating uh, cassette tapes, right? So I think it would be a great idea. We actually found some of that. You found it, right? Right. And, you some know... Some of the early days, yeah. Yeah. The, the I, didn't, I didn't find any of the... So, so we, uh, the first one we recorded was our demo album, which we weren't going to release, but we just needed material to sell when we were busking all over the place, doing street performing. So we, we put together that little cassette and that has the four heads logo 
on the front. And that was our first official band logo. Have you got? I think you've got a, uh, a copy of that, the four heads. Yeah, I'm going to show everybody right now. So that's, that was based on our haircuts in silhouette, side on. Oh, you know what? Wasn't this also, this was like a sticker or a magnet, right? Didn't I have this magnet on my refrigerator? Oh, that's right. Yeah, for we, at one point we made fridge magnets out of all the different albums. Yeah, I had the. I think that's like right when I like joined the band. But I mean, like, so this, so the haircuts, right? So that was the first one. That was the first. That was a demo album. Mm -hmm. I think there's only one tune on there with bagpipes. What can you tell and me about that? Let's take a look at this um, character picture. It says, brother, on tour. Uh, this is the character picture with all you guys, you know, playing your instruments. Who did that? That's a good question. It might have been Hash. Hamish did a lot of our little quirky uh, renderings, like caricatures early on. But that could also have been a, a fan who, who sent it in to us. I'm not sure because it's not, it's not uh, labeled. And I wasn't... Good maybe about, somebody, maybe uh, somebody here knows, you know, chime in, let us know below. Let's put it up. <laughs> um, Is that up? You? Can the people see that one? Oh, yeah. So maybe like since we're doing this in post, you know, I, I, I'll I edit that in for it. Oh, good. All right. Um, so, yeah, we yeah. took a look at the, the four haircuts. We took a look at the character uh, photograph. So let's take a look now. Um, what do we got here? We got, well, first off, let's take a look at this picture. I don't know what's going on this photograph, but it's the, this one, mate. You guys are uh, well. That's yeah, the pipe dreams cassette. Let's talk about that. Yeah, well, that was the that was the first album that we really got our our own sound down. Where we'd been workshopping. When we first came to LA. It was a lot of a lot of the rock clubs around town. You know, the, the standard, you know, uh, well known clubs like Troubadour and Roxy and Club Lingerie was one we played for a while. And uh, so we, we were mainly a rock band then until we got onto the street and Hamish pulled out his homemade didgeridoo, which he made, made two didgeridoos and they were both tunable. And as far as we know, they were the first tunable didges ever made. Ever made. Back in the end of 1991. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't, as far as you know, Hamish invented those. Just two pieces of PVC pipe, slightly different width, widths, one inside the other, so that we could uh, play in different tunes, in, in different uh, keys. Do you remember what so the we, first we, song was we that you were able to do in two different keys? What's that? Do you, do you remember what the first song was that you guys were able to do in two different keys with the didge? Uh, well, it, it was, we first started playing, them, playing the didges with the bagpipes. So mm -hmm. B-flat was the first, is the first main key of the bagpipes and then the uh the uh c minor which is right. relative to the b flat so both those keys we used to do things like the unknown and clumsy lover in those keys bagpipe keys so so we'd have a little uh some sort of little sound system that we'd we'd amplify the the didgeridoo through and i've got a i i, I we need to find some uh photos of of the busking and some yeah. video because back in those days, we had, like, every day, once we got going and we we're playing places like outside the Hollywood Bowl, uh, outside the music centre downtown, we'd have hundreds of people there and then eventually Universal City Walk. Um, but we'd have every day, like, set after set, hundreds of people and so many people taking photos and, and taking videos and, you know, whatever the format was back in 91, 2, 3, when we're doing all of that, I don't, I don't know. Was Around that time, back then? I mean, like people were using large video cameras with VHS tapes in it, and then it got, I believe, eight millimeter came out, and then there was Super Eight, VHS C. There's so many different mediums, you know. I mean, did you ever think though that you able you'd be able to just take your phone out and take like a you know an amazing looking video? Like no, no, that was that was Star Trek. Totally, totally Star Trek. Totally something from the future that. I mean, we thought it would be possible. I remember, like, as a kid, like, watching the cartoon The Jetsons and thinking there's no way, man, that we're going to be able to communicate like that. Or even Dick Tracy on his, you know, his watch phone. We got an We iPhone. grew up on the farm where we grew up. We, we had a black and white TV until after we left home. So until we were in college, 
it was just a black and white TV. You know, there were, what is it, two or th- maybe two stations. Uh, of course, no computers back then, not even, they were never, never computers in the home. We didn't, we never had a video camera. Uh, that whole culture's changed now. Now, the, the song Photograph that, that Hash and I wrote has kept, kept coming back into my mind these last few weeks. Um, just the relevance of it uh, and what it speaks to. Like nowadays, we have to capture everything, whether it's on video or, or, or photographs. And for me, it's back when we were writing that song, was also. I have to write a song about this, have to write a song about that rather than just being in the moment. And I think that's really indicative of these times. It really is. I mean, a lot how, of people... how, how much are we in the moment anymore? And, and our kids as well. Younger people. I, I would say that, you know, um, I'm one of the, I mean, like there's really, I mean, honest to God, there's really nothing positive about this COVID-19. But the one thing is though, if you're a person who, utilizes this time correctly and spend it with your kids you're getting that extra mile that you you don't get you know like a lot of kids in the early stages of their you know lives don't spend that much time with their moms and dads you know they just don't so i mean no. like also too like with the photographs you know it's like i mean like even like when i joined you guys in 2004 i we couldn't do that yet we couldn't take a photograph and post it out so 2000 3000 people could see it right away and it evolved so quickly. And yeah, I remember it, like listening to you guys. I remember you guys talking about the song Photograph too. And it's just like, you know, the thing too that, you know, like recently I've been going through a lot of stuff here in my house and I have all my photographs, you know, they were just scattered about for a bit. So like, I think it was like last week, I just got them all, got a whole bunch of books and like arranged them in books. And it felt good to put these memories in order, you know? Right. It's funny because I've been thinking about the early days of Brother and realizing that there's a lot of it that I that is out there in the ether that we don't have. Well, maybe or somebody can help us find it. I know that like fans are actually right like like on the Brother page on Facebook. Some people are you know finding stuff, sending us stuff, which we're going to incorporate into uh, later episodes. And you know, I mean. It's, you know what's crazy, too, is like how much media was captured in the early 90s that then was lost, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's going to be interesting. For me, it also reminds me of uh, when I took the band off the road in 2015 just because I I was pretty burnt out and needed to be more with my kids. Uh, I, I was getting into a fair bit of Celtic history and legends and and uh, learning that so much of it is is just legend. and. There was so little written history that was lost. And uh, I, I found myself comparing a lot of the brother timeline and history yeah. to, to that. Like it's out there somewhere or is it? You know, is my memory of a lot of these times even accurate? So so I, wanna, I haven't actually done it yet, but, but really canvas our followers. You guys, I haven't even said g'day. So look, once again, my apologies. I know you're there. And... Uh, Really appreciate having you as part of this conversation. So, so comment, criticize, suggest, advise. Uh, let us know your thoughts. And if you got particularly that early time, the early first ten years, you know, from '91 through uh, the end of that decade, if anyone's got some classic footage that they really like or or photos, mm-hmm. let us know. And uh, we'll get it to Jim and Leals and start processing it and put the pieces together a bit more. Because uh, just getting back to what you were saying about this time, you know, uh, jumping about, thinking about this time being in, you know, for one of a better word, in quarantine or just just uh, just at home for all this time, being able to be with the kids in this kind of intense environment and for prolonged periods and be able to focus on that is amazing. Yeah, I think it's very important. I think it's important for, I mean, even too, if you don't have kids and like, you're, you know, you're like, well, what about me, Angus and Bob? What do I do? Take this time to have some self-reflection. Think about like what your role is in the universe. You know what I mean? Like not just your role in where you live in your hometown or in your social community, but like, what are you giving back right now? 
think about altruism well, during this time rather than like what I can get for myself. Right. Well, I think they go hand in hand because, you know, if you want your life to have meaning, you've got you to see how your life relates to, to everybody else. And so where I was going with that, I think this time is helping everybody focus in on what's important. And, uh, you know, I've done a lot of reflecting about how is it I got to where I'm at and why is the brother beast still so prominent in my, in my life? Um, uh, and that, uh, that line from the Godfather three always comes to mind for me. Uh, Al Pacino saying he's in the kitchen and saying, just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. It's got, for me in a way, that's kind of how it's been. It's always been there just with a hand on my shoulder, pulling me back for whatever reason. So this time in particular is allowing me to, even though I'm busy with school stuff and, and, and everything else. Mm -hmm. Reflecting on that, how did I get here? And where do I go from here? I had a mate say to me the other day, well, look, you know, I, what I really, I like what you're doing with, you know, going back and examining the past and brother and, and what it means, but I want to hear what you're doing now. You know, where are the songs about this time and, and, and your reflections on, you know, from, from this standpoint? which I have, but I haven't really, I uh, haven't uh, made myself record those, get those down. So, yeah. so that's got to go, I, mean, I think that's got to go hand in hand with what I'm doing. It's very interesting too, because it's like, you know, like, uh, what are you doing right, like now? It's like, well, we're in this period of time where like, yeah, I mean, we're both creative people and we're both, you know, doing things like writing and stuff like that. But at the same time, we've been doing this a long time, making things, you know? We've never slowed down, really. You know what I mean? Like, I've never had this much time at home, ever. You know what I mean? And I'm sure, like, you, you know, you can attest to the same. You're on the road. And, like, you know, like, when it comes to creativity, you know, I, I feel like um, that spark, you know, there's a lot of them. But there's one flame that's a lot larger than the others. Would you agree with that? There's one what? There's like one, you, you, like you ever have a couple ideas and you're like, wow, that's a great one. But then like you compare them to something else that you just came up with and you're like, oh no, this one clearly is the song that I need to put out there right now, you know? Oh yeah. Like I've got, I've got notebooks full of songs and half songs and, you know, recordings, just brief recordings or long recordings. And, you know, I'll revisit some of them, but so many of them probably won't. Um, that's just, that's, that's how it is when you when you mm -hmm. create you know i mean um, the interesting thing too i mean like I, you know the name of the show is brother reflections right so like as we go through this long textured history i mean one of the interesting things that's starting to pop up and we're going to share this now with the audience is that we're starting to get you know videos so we did come come across the promo video from the year 1994 right i was 14 years I think old. say that again yeah i think it's actually 95 Wow. So what, what I was, what, you know, we talked before we started about these first couple of ep episodes, you know, looking at some, some of those early years when, which was basically when Brett was in the band. It happens. The neighbor walking past. It happens. Uh, so, so I've been thinking about that time, you know, with those early logos, the, the foreheads and then the, the, the cross bagpipes and, and uh, guitar. So that period was when Brett was in the band. He was an Aussie who came over. We told everybody he was our, our cousin. Um, but, you know, he was like a blood brother. And well, so those, those early years up until he got married and then decided they decided to move back to Australia. So that was the end of 95. And that was when Dabo came into the band right at the end of 95. Well, you so know that what? promo was made with mm -hmm. Brett. With Brett, uh, we had footage from one of our Troubadour shows, I think, and uh, and then we had an interview we did for Channel Seven in Australia. So this is footage from those two things combined, and uh, I think we recorded the the interview in our in our parents' living room on the farm. Wow. And Brett, Brett's there, but we didn't have him talk a lot because he was leaving the band. 
Oh, wow. um, so that was it. that was right at the end of that first phase, and then then Dalbo came into the band. And, well, what's, uh, what's um what's uh, show the the viewers and listeners right now uh, this promo video from 1995 here on Brother Reflections. This is the bag. These are the pops. Hints. The bag pops. People just seem to really uh, get off on seeing men in skirts. Of course, they're very comfortable. The modern rock and roll kilt. If I'm blind another day, will you take my eyes and fly away? We had originally gone to the States expecting to be there for maybe six months and have the big deal, and I uh, really had no idea what we were up to when we landed. I am Hamish. I'm Angus. And I'm Fergus. And we are brothers. With our music, we're using, like the didgeridoo and the bagpipes, especially in the tribal percussion, um, we're using very ancient and traditional instruments uh, in a modern context. What seems to be a thing with Western music these days is that it, um, it seems to like to divide people up into little categories. There's another drive. It's sort of the music's more powerful if you can um, bring people together. One of the most satisfying things about the, the music that we've sort of developed over the last year or two is uh, the, the the range of audience that we seem to be attracting and that's actually getting off on the music. For some reason the Scottish heritage is kind of fairly strong still and we just had an interest in learning the pipes. Not picking up my kilt, are you? The bagpipes for a long time were only sort of dragged out of the mothballs every now and then, like for New Year's Eve or whatever. The rock band didn't really incorporate the bagpipes until we got to America. Fergus has the, the worst kept bagpipes in the band. They call me Mr. Maintenance. Sitting here, my eyes are wide, looking at you. I see you talking, but it's not your voice at all. I try to tell you, what else can I do? It's quite common when we're playing a gig for Fergus's pipes to actually fall apart when he's ah. playing. So it took putting on a skirt to get noticed? <laughs> it did actually. El Kilto. Oh. Rock and roll version. It's a funny story behind the kilts, but uh, is there a story behind it? <laughs> <laughs> the uh, finishing touches to any noble Scotsman. Don't know what I see. Music has evolved its own character.
Just yeah. because it, it, it had to, you know, we had to work out what worked and what people related to. And I think that's that's been a really important part of the uh, the evolution. We uh, love getting out and playing live. I think that's that's really what what it's all about for us. Getting the uh, immediate reaction. <laughs> We're back here now with Gus. Uh, that was a video that we found on YouTube, you know, and it, like watching that video, Gus, what type of thoughts are elicited in your mind? Well, first of all, just how fresh faced we are, which, um, you know, stands to reason because we're all pretty young. Um, but the excitement of that time, just realizing that we'd, we'd, we'd come up, we'd, we'd actually found our own sound, which is always important for a band to do. And it had been quite a few years. You know, I think we were, we were late developers in a lot of way. We grew up, the three of us grew up on a farm, pretty sheltered. And it took us a while to get some life experience coming to LA and realizing that, okay, we played the bagpipes. Maybe we should use those. Maybe we should use the digs, which Hash had always been fascinated by. But it took a you know, few years on the streets, paying the rent, developing that sound and combining that with our rock and roll sound in the clubs. And it felt good at that. I remember feeling excited at that point that we, we had found our own sound and people were responding. So that's yeah, what that's, I, that's, that's all a band ever can ask for. I mean, that's any, like, even if you're like a stand up comedian or if you're a painter or if you're somebody who just like makes like widgets and wants to sell them on Etsy or something like that, you're always looking for your audience to connect with you. And when that happens, I was fortunate enough to have that happen with my band, Downtown Harvest. And, you know, it doesn't go away. And that's one of the reasons why you're still doing your thing today is because you've made that connection with somebody. You've affected them here in their heart. And when that happens, it's just awesome, you know? Well, it, well, it completes the circle because you've created something that means something to you. And then if you do it with a group of people too, then that's incredibly special. But then if other people, if it means something to them, then, it, then the, the meaning is amplified. And to share that, like I was saying in that promo video, for us, getting up and playing live was everything. We love being in the studio and experimenting, but to have that chemistry with a live audience, it's nothing like it. I just yeah. loved it. And for me, those early days were so easy because I had always had a great band around me. I just had to get up there with a bass guitar. You know, it's like four strings, and you just lay into that. You're the bass player for Downtown Harbor, still mm -hmm. one of my favorite bands. That groove, you know, there's nothing like yeah. that groove because you're put like you, you put down that groove, you're making that pulse happen. Like, the other thing, too, is like, look, let's just be honest, we're bass players. The bass is the most, I mean, I would argue maybe the drums, but the bass and drums connect everything, it helps with the melody, helps with the, the focus of the song, and like that's what makes you get out on the dance floor, yes. You got to have a good rhythm section if you want to have a good band. Yeah, you got that. So, you have a good rhythm section. So I love those days. Like the, Hamish and Fergus were both, I think, much better bagpipers than me. Um, oh, the recycling guys here. So he's, that's what you're hearing in the background. But it happens. <laughs> so I, they do more of the piping than I would. And, yeah, I mean, uh, well, I mean, that's crazy because like, you know, I mean, that happened then, but then like when I'm in mean, my like v phase of the band, like you were always playing the, the double bagpipes, but I mean, we'll get into that until a later date, but I mean like 94, 95, right. We're entering into like this, like new era of, of brother. Right now. I mean, like, I think that like next for episode three, we may have to just spend the whole episode talking about the big D Dalbo, right? Yeah, I think we can get into Dalbo. So, so, so that promo marked a time, one of those really challenging times when somebody left for whatever reason. And we were just so fortunate to find Dalbo. So the next time I'll, I can tell the story about how we, maybe I'll tell the story about how I came across Dalbo and how, how exciting and easy that segue was. But, um, yeah, those challenges of, of having someone leave and then having to reinvent. Um, 
they're, they're those interesting times. Okay, well, what's it going to be like? How, how are we going to feel about it? And how is our audience going to feel about it? Yeah, that, you know, it's a, it's a very interesting point too because, I mean, you're changing, like we just discussed a very specific part of, part of the band, the rhythm section, you know? So, like, you don't know which way it's going to go, you know? And, like... You don't. But here's the, here's the interesting thing. Brett was a fantastic drummer. We've always had really good drummers and all very different. But Brett was, he was so talented. He also, this is what I want to ask everybody out there. It, it, Brett sang. So that early lineup with the four of us was very unique. So when we did all that street performing, he was an integral part of it. He had a great low voice. So he took all those low harmonies in Amazing Grace and Seven Bridges Road, um, Java Jive. He was a big part of that. Wow. So I, I'd love to get hold of some good quality video and sound of some of those performances because there was just hundreds and hundreds of them. And it became quite, um, you know, iconic for us, that those a cappella performances. And on top of that, he was, he was a great drummer. So to replace him was a challenge. And we were very fortunate to be, to be able to do that. Yeah. So that, that's my last uh, request to everybody. Put the word out. Let's see if we can find good sound and uh, footage of those early days, particularly the busking. I want to focus on that. Yeah, even if you got uh, video with uh, some, you know, kind of shoddy audio, send it my way because I can make it sound pretty good. I got some tricks up my sleeve in the video and audio department. Um, He's the maestro. Yeah, the maestro. I, you know, the evolution of uh, Brother, you know, I mean – it, 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 who knows how many episodes we could do on this too. And like, you know, brother reflections doesn't necessarily just mean the past. It also means the future. So, I mean, we're going to evolve. The show's going to evolve. You're going to evolve with us each Saturday as you watch the show with us. I had such hey, a great time uh, uh, last week on episode one, cause it was fr brand new and fresh, but it, it seemed to me that the people enjoyed it. Um, we are going to work towards having the live show. We're going to bring other members of the band in. We're going to perhaps even bring you guys in. If there's a super fan out there who wants to come on the show and chat with Angus and tell us why you love the band, I would love to hear that story. So I think a good transition right now, too, would be to have a song from Angus here live on Brother Reflections. I was actually going to say I'd do it next time because I thought we'd run out of time. So no, maybe we I could... time, mate. Give me something. Give, you can do I, something I, for me. I would tease you guys. So here's the thing. I'm also, I'm getting on top of my technology because I'm outside here. I'm having a bit of, tr last time I wore those earpieces, but that looks pretty cut price. So I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing you. So we'll talk about that for the next episode. But that early period has brought to mind what for me is the iconic song of those very early days. Because this was basically the first, I think the first brother song. Because we began it in the months before we came to America, in our uh, good friend's beach house in, in Sydney. And then we finished it over here. It was on our demo, but the, the, the uh, version that lasted was on our, our last record with Ferg, The Digging Bone. So it's a, it's a very meaningful song for me. And it was, was inspired by growing up on the farm during a drought. So. I haven't really worked up a, a version of it yet, but maybe next time. Mm. But I'll just play a little bit of it. It's a song called Rainmaker. And it featured the three harmonies, but it, 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 it uh, drew on our childhood and those experiences. And then about moving to the big city and how that felt. Dust in the riverbed, water tank dry. Four bad years, smiles resting. No room for the finer things. Blood red earth, fragile dreams. Blown away on the thirsty winds. 
Once upon a time is an easy life. Where is a rainmaker who knows what it's coming to? Wait for the rainmaker, make for the dream time. Make for the dream time. So I'll, I'm going to learn that one a bit better because I didn't play the guitar on it. No, I remember that. Sang it. I remember hearing that, like, um, I think you guys would, like, warm up to that or, like, do, like, a sound check to that song. But, um, yeah, it's a beautiful song. It's a nice arrangement. Thank you, mate. Yeah, it's been... I've been liking getting back on the acoustic, so I'll, I'm going to look at some... What kind of acoustic you got there? Is that an ovation? No. What's uh, uh, Larravee? It's a nice guitar. And uh, it's a husband-wife team. He makes the guitar. She does the inlays. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's Or say something. That's my mermaid. So how about this? You know, life life throws you some curveballs. And, uh, you know, I five years ago or so when uh, I was having to take the band off the road, my marriage was also on the rocks. You know, just things like that happen. But uh, I'm very fortunate to have a great relationship with the mum of my kids nowadays and and uh very very thankful for that but uh she and her partner gave me this guitar for christmas last year so it's uh it's uh very meaningful i think that's and, great. i mean like you know i mean since you brought it up i just want to commend you on being um you know i know you're a great dad but you're also like you know uh like a new age type of dad you know what i mean like you you get along, you know, some people don't get along with their exes and they don't necessarily, um, you know, want to intermingle, you know, and you guys, you know, you just celebrated your daughter's birthday at, uh, you went camping, you know, and I think that's beautiful, man. I think more people should do that because you know what? I think that once you get past the age of like 40, like it, it's not about you no more, man. It's about your kids. You know what I mean? Well, if you've got so, kids, it's all it's about ultimately. It's about. And, uh, you know, look, every situation's different and, I can only speak about ours, but it was always going to be the way. Every step mm-hmm. of the way that they have to come first. So, yeah, I think it's a great thing. Um, well, I, I really enjoyed uh, recording episode two of Brother Reflections with you today. Um, next week we'll be back. Uh, we're going to dive into the new era of Brother, which is with Dalbo, which is he's he's still one of my favorite drummers to this day. Um, so I think, you know, um, you can sign off. And then as we sign off today, perhaps let's just play a little bit of what Dabo is up to these days. Give the, the brother listeners and viewers a taste of his rhythmic skills behind the kit. Is that okay with you, Gus? The one and only Dabo. Yep, he's magic. Always magic behind the kit. So thank you, Bob. Thanks, for everybody, for being here and uh, for um, hanging out for our ramblings. Excellent. Good day. Good day. Look after yourself. Bob. Uh, that's Gussie over there in Oregon. I'm in Philadelphia and you guys are spread out all over the country. And, uh, we look forward each week to chiming in with you guys. Look after yourselves and each other. That's right. So let's, uh, wrap things up here. This is a video sent in by the one and only Dalbo here on brother reflections. <laughs>